So, hallo, boa noite, guten Abend, meine Damen und Herren, und äh, herzlich willkommen im Kino des Deutschen Filmmuseums für die Fortsetzung der Reihe Tropical Underground, äh, das brasilianische Cinema Marginal und die Revolution des Kinos. Ich vergesse immer den ganzen Titel zu nennen, aber ich glaube, das wird heute besonders äh, interessant zu denken, äh, auch äh, was für revolutionär dieser Film heute Abend ist. Wir bedanken uns sehr bei unseren Kooperationspartner, dem Institut für Theater, Film und Medien und dem Exzellenzcluster Normative Orders der Goethe Universität. Danke dieser Zusammenarbeit, dieser Reihe in dieser Form überhaupt möglich und nur so können wir auch dieser freie Eintritt bei dieser Reihe hier anbieten. So, heute zeigen wir Senhor Saranha, ein Film von Rogério Gonzalez aus äh, 1970. Und wer schon hier im November äh, den Film von Gonzalez, The Red Light Bandit, aus äh, 68 gesehen hat, wird merken, eine radikale ähm, ähm, ja, Veränderung oder ähm, wie, wie das sich geändert hat in so viel, weniger Zeit in äh, Gonzalez äh, Arbeit. Ähm, und diese Situation und diese Veränderungen besser zu erklären, haben wir heute einen Spezialist, äh, ähm, der ein Spezialist für Cinema Marginal, Professor Fernão Ramos, und er, heut, er wird heute auch äh, von Professor Vincent Rediger näher äh, vorgestellt. Wie immer, ich wollte noch, noch darauf hinweisen, dass nach dem Vortrag machen wir eine kleine Pause. Sie haben noch die Gelegenheit, äh, Getränke im Café oben zu kaufen und äh, dann fangen wir mit dem Film an und nach dem Film haben wir wie immer eine Diskussion, wo Sie auch Fragen zum Vortrag oder und oder zum Film ähm, stellen können. Und deswegen freue ich mich sehr, dass so viele heute gekommen sind und ich hoffe auch, dass Sie äh, bis Ende bleiben. Es wird sicherlich spannend. Vielen Dank und viel Spaß heute Abend. So, good evening from my side. I'm switching to English. Um, uh, we, we just had a discussion about uh, underground and avant-garde cinema of the 60s and 70s, and um, I, one of the things I said to Fernau was that in Germany, um, cinema after maybe 1964 is more or less television, or there is no cinema without television. And Fanon's first reaction was, well, you know, cinema and television, those are two separate entities, uh, which is, of course, true. But if you look at how the films were made and who financed them and who made them possible, and if you look at the early work of people like Fassbinder or Wim Wenders and uh, certainly Werner Schröter, you will find out that they were actually produced by German television, preferably by ZDF. And so uh, at one point in the discussion, uh, Fanon said, so what you're really saying is that... <clears throat> On the ground cinema in Germany was produced by state television. And I said, yes. And then Fanon said, well, you know, Cinema Marginal was produced by people who made their money making porn films. Uh, so that's a very different production environment. The reason why I'm telling you this anecdote is that um, Fanon Pshor Ramos is one of the great specialists of the Cinema Marginal. Uh, he wrote a book in 1986 called uh, Cinema Marginal, The Limits of Representation, which sadly has only been available in Portuguese. Uh, and he's about to finish another book on Cinema Marginal, which is to, uh, to come out this year or next year, in 2019. Um, and uh, he is very well versed in the production histories uh, of the cinema marginal. Um, the, the picture that you see here on the screen is a picture of Elena Inez, uh, the big star of cinema marginal, who was previously a star of cinema novo, but then transitioned into the underground uh, with Rogério Scanzella. Um, and a good case can be made that um, Elena Inez uh, was also, in a way, the co-author of, of the films that she made uh, with uh, Rogério Scancello and Giulio Bressani. And what we're going to hear about tonight is a particular moment in the development of Cinema Marginal, namely the moment when Rogério Scancello, after having met Giulio Bressani at the Brasilia Film Festival, moved together with Elena Inez to Rio de Janeiro, and they created a production company called Bel Air Films, Uh, which had an enormous output in a very short time and made uh, truly experimental feature films uh, that um, uh, deserve all our attention 
and deserve all the critical attention that we can devote to them. And uh, there's nobody better placed to talk about this than uh, Fernau Suaramos. Fernau is a professor of cinema studies at the State University of Campinas, Unicamp, outside of uh, Sao Paulo. He's the founder of the Brazilian Association for Film Studies and was the president of that association from 1997 to 2001. He has taught uh, outside of Brazil, particularly in France, uh, at the Université Paris 3 Sorbonne Nouvelle, which is sort of the European center of film studies, the largest film studies department in any country in the world, I'd say. Uh, he's also taught at the Université Paris 10 Nanterre, and he is currently um, a research fellow and guest professor at the film studies department of the University of Chicago, another major center of film studies. Uh, other guest professorships, by the way, include Iowa and all the big uh, schools in the United States. Um, he has edited an encyclopedia of Brazilian cinema, and uh, coming out in uh, March uh, from Seski Publishers in Sao Paulo is a massive two-volume uh, uh, history of Brazilian cinema, in which, of course, Fernau wrote a chapter on Cinema Marginal, and uh, we, we just talked about ways of getting it translated into German and published here. So that's a, that's a real plan that we have. Fernau, thank you so much for uh, coming to uh, Frankfurt to talk about Semesa Aranha, and uh, I hand the podium over to you. Thank you so much. Hi, thanks for the introduction and a um, little superlative. <laughs> well, and uh, wait a moment, I get, have to get things starts here. So I would like to thank uh, Vicens for his invitation, the Goethe University of Frankfurt, the Dutch Film Institute, Lily Bush and Laura Teixeira also <laughs> helped me uh, get in here. Uh, hope my English will get this 45 minutes. I hope you have patience, a little patience with my English. I always say I prefer to speak French, but we have to speak English. So let's see what I can do with my, uh, with my English. So let's go. Uh, I'm going to make a uh, little review. I mean, I, I'm going to, to give you a panorama of uh, uh, a little panorama of uh, Cinema Novo and Cinema Marginal in the 60s. So we have to, to go fast. And uh, a chronological panorama, how Cinema Marginal begins and how it ends and where does it come from. But the first point to understand the Brazilian cinema, Brazilian culture, and especially in the, in, the, in the 60s, and this is the point where I'm coming from, uh, to understand Brazilian society. I mean, uh, the cinemas are, I have this, this theory, cinemas are very national. I mean, it's not something that I'm, I'm saying that should be national. I'm just, it's a constatation. So uh, there's something very strong in Brazilian society, and Brazilian cinema always kind of turn around this. And that's the point where I'm going to start uh, today. Uh, Brazil is a very uh, uh, unjust, a very, uh, a, a very unfair society. Uh, we have a, a, a very bad income distribution. That is known by everyone. So it's a, a divided society. You have 80% or more than that that's very poor, and you have 20%, the middle class that has a little more, uh, that's, well, more established. And this 80%, we have a word for this. This is the popular, so, or the, 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 the people. Uh, when we say popular, uh, sometimes uh, people understand a huge audience. No, it's not this sense. Uh, uh, Brazilian has a kind of a gap. And this gap is what I'm going to explore today. To understand tropicalism and to understand the cinema marginal, we have to understand this gap. Uh, why? Because these gaps make another, and another that's a gnome, that is uh, intense, is dread, is fearful, that's the people. 
and uh, uh, it's kind of uh, if you have, uh, uh, for for instance, uh, uh, United States also you have the, the African American <coughs> part of society that's kind of other, but uh, Brazil is very huge. It's kind of a, a Palestinian inside Israel, <laughs> if you want, and uh, and so the sixty is the moment where where. Uh, people get aware of the, the other people, of the, uh, uh, the, the middle class gets aware of the other, of the, 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 the people. So you have uh, this fearfulness for uh, how, how I'm going to deal with this. And this is uh, very present. So it's from this point that I'm going, uh, I'm going to, to get out. I mean, I'm going to develop. In cinema, <clears throat> In music, you have a popular, you have musica popular brasileira. You have a popular music. You have Cartola, uh, Nelson Cavaquinho, Zequete, Moreira da Silva that we're going to see today, Luiz Gonzaga. They are, you have a real music, a real art from music that's made than, than the hills of Rio, than Bahia, <laughs> but not in cinema. Cinema is a very expensive art. So you don't have a popular filmmaker. I mean, you have one popular filmmaker in, Brazilian history, that's Candeias. I exaggerate a little, but it's, it's kind of this, Osvaldo Candeias. But so it's an art made by the, the, the middle class, and this is the point. So we talk about a lot of popular in the sixties in cinema novo, but you don't have a popular cinema. So uh, to start with, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> in the sixties, in this schema of uh, the me and the other. We are going to see three moments, and uh, in the in the <clears throat> in the this horizon of of popular. So I'm going to call me the middle class, and other uh, the popular. So the, the first moment in the beginning of the '60s, you have this kind of knowledge about the other. And the other, as always, is something that uh, it's fearfulness, it's dread, it's frightened, it's fear, and is in trends. I mean, this notion of trends is very present. And uh, 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 trends comes along with alienation. So you have the, 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 the middle class that has a, a, a political view, the, the, the praxis, and the other, that's something unknown. So you have a second moment, a, doubt, a doubtful second moment. This is the moment of mauvaise conscience, bad conscience, and a liberate third moment. It, it will be clear uh, in, a, in a moment. I'm just throwing to you an idea that I'm going to develop. So this third moment, uh, a moment of friends, is a, is a rotation. And in Cinema Marginal, you're going to see this, this moment very strong, this horror and pleasure, the two extremes. And my thesis is that uh, tropicalism and Cinema Marginal is when the other goes inside. It's a movement that, I mean, this, this big gap, this abyss, this, this, this great, this great uh, unknown, this powerful, uh, this powerful drive that comes inside, no? and it, this, it gives this kind of explosion that you're going to see today in Senha uh, uh, Aranha. So <laughs> you have <laughs> tropicalism as this liberated third moment here. Where is, ah, okay, this third moment. So I'm going to say two words about tropicalism before going in, into cinema, uh, more, uh, in cinema uh, marginal. Tropicalism would be the me trans mood, the, the moment that the, the, the inside goes in trans and it's inside me, the, 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 the Moyan, the, the middle class <coughs> artist. So this is kind of this kind of combination, this kind of interaction between pop and and trance. Uh, why pop? Because in 
in these trends, you, you have a, a, a kind of a, a, a big mess, a big jelly, the national jelly, where everything is mis mixed. You, 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 you have a, a liquid fake, a, 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 a kind of machine that, mis that puts everything together. And uh, this is the pop sensibility. The pop sensibility or the anthropophagical sensibility, the interstitial aptit with this, uh, great this great openness to the, to, the, to the kitsch. For instance, popular kitsch, Coração Materno, the Vicente Celestino, the nationalist kitsch, the Brazil Grande, the military, the religious, the religious kitsch, the Baroque, the, the strength presence of Baroque, the industrial kitsch, propaganda, merchandising, this relation of like, the avant-garde. It's you have a complete openness, openness and a kind of uh, end of the this big. Um, uh, it's a. Uh, 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 a kind of uh, <coughs> essay to get liberated from the mauvaise conscience, from this big figure of the, the people that gets uh, that that is uh, behind. So I, I brought here some uh, archetypal figures of um, uh, margin of uh, tropicalism. Maybe you have seen already. This is the the, the record manifest. The record that starts tropicalism, Tropicalia. This is the, the record of Caetano Veloso one year before that has Alegria, Alegria. Uh, the flag or, 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 or the, the work of uh, <coughs> Helio Itzica, Seja Marginal, Seja Herói. So Marginal is a, a very common, very present name. Terra in Trans, that's in cinema, the film that starts with tropicalism, the film that inspirates tropicalism, e o Rei da Vela de José Celso Martinez in drama. So you can see here is dedicated to Glauber Rocha. And this is this uh, a poster not only of Rei da Vela, but also the Oficina Theater that uh, it exists until uh, that is there until uh, until today. So this is only to have an idea of, uh, of uh, the biggest, the, the key moments of uh, tropicalism. And I would like to, so to highlight this, this, uh, this definition as of tropicalism in my sense uh, of, uh, as a feature of language and expression and this anthropophagic uh, instance that uh, is in a moment, in the end of the 60s, that came in a, in a kind of evolution. So only this is a kind of, of manifest of uh, uh, tropicalism. And uh, so you have uh, the G Brazilian jelly, Geleia Geral Brasileira. This phrase is very typical of tropicalism. So you have Bumba Meu Boi. This is a, a folk expression of Nordest. And in the mural, you have AAE. So, Geleia Geral, this is the manifest of tropicalism. Tr Turcato Neto is a, a poet. And Gilberto Gil, you know, it's, it's a very popular, uh, very, very known, uh, popular uh, musician uh, new, uh, at Brazil. So, Bumba Yeye. Boy, yeah, yeah, it's mean yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's rock. So it's bumba rock boy. That's this idea that you can. Tropicalism is a big swelling. It, it it's it, it's everything. It's a big. So it shakes, mixture and eats. That's tropicalism. So uh, this melange, this uh, uh, mixture of uh, uh, of uh, bumba meu boy and yeah, yeah, yeah. This is very, very important. This, uh, this very typical, very characteristic of tropicalism. This, this idea of uh, the happiness is what, what really, uh, in, uh, what's really important. Alegria as prova dos nove. Happiness is what's really happiness. This, this, this power drive. This things that you get out and you do it, and. Tumbadora, na selva, Tumbadora is a kind of a tambour in the jungle. Pindorama 
is the ideal, I, I, uh, the utopia of the Tupi Guarani. So this mixture of uh, Africa and Indians. And then the, re the relics of Brazil. What are the relics? This is a, a tropicalist idea that you're going to see in Cinema Marginal too. This swelling of uh, uh, cultural product, the industrial culture and tradition and, uh, and uh, kitsch and uh, uh, genres, Hollywood cinema. So this kind, this possibility to put everything to, together and say, this is Brazil. So what's Brazil? It's the sweet mulata, uh, LP de Sinatra, so you imagine it, Sinatra, uh, Sinatra record as relics of Brazil, Fruit de la Passion, uh, uh, Passion Fruit, uh, Baroque, the Baroque scents, superpower of the civilian, superpower, this hero superpower and civilian, that's a kind of, farm plaque is a kind of wood, uh, very, very modern, this ultra modern, that's very, the ultra more modern and the ultra uh, old. That's the strands of tropicalism. Three highlights of Portela, school, school samba, uh, dry meat in the window, somebody that cries for me, a real carnival, uh, friendship, and uh, this is a very beautiful uh, figure, uh, garden, uh, brutality and garden, or garden of brutality. This is very, very Brazilian society. And uh, uh, Tropicalia is bananas in the wind. So you have Bob Dylan saying, uh, uh, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. So Tropicalia is, there, there are bananas that are blowing in the wind. So um, this is, I'm going to jump this. This is the, the, the Tropicalia Manifesto. And uh, <clears throat> come to, the, uh, to the, 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 the popular that I was. This line of development that I'm falling to get in this. So I, I was speaking of three moments of this big other uh, that's the popular. Uh, this big abyss, this, this, this big uh, uh, unknown that is the, 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 the popular. So the first moment I will put around the, the CPC before 1964 is the moment where the popular comes to Brazilian culture, to, comes to the front line of Brazilian culture. What's the first movement? The first movement is to no, to have knowledge, and not only knowledge, but this, this is essential, a kind of denial. What kind of denial? The denial of the trends. Why? Because the popular culture has this trends, this, this spring, this force, uh, this irrational force, very strong, this drive, this pulsion. And this is something that makes... Uh, it's a problem. It's a problem to deal with this when you have the, the praxis and the, the political knowledge. So uh, Carlos Estevam Martin, if you, if, you, if you read the, the, the Anteprojeto do CPC, it's a, it's a kind of a project of what, what will be the cultural popular centers. They were very present in Brazil from the, from the National Students Association. He says that it's three kinds of, of, of uh, popular art. The art from the people, that's the folk art, that's very critical. The, he's very critical. I put bad, bad, but good, so you can make the difference in the, in the simple way. Uh, kind of, uh, this is uh, not simple as that, but it's only for a conference. So, <laughs> and mass, the second, uh, popular art is mass culture. So the, 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 the popular that has a big audience. So the popular that goes to the, to the television, to the mass media. And the third art is the, the only good art, is the revolutionary popular art, the political art. 
the political art made mostly, mostly by the middle class. So the middle class, that's the point I come back. The middle class has this knowledge what about people has to do. And they have to get out of trans. trans. And what's trans in Brazilian culture? You're going to see this in the first cinema novel. What's the popular culture of trans is for cinema novel? It's uh, uh, carnival, trans, candomblé, trans. Candomblé, you know, it's a popular uh, religion that came from Africa. And the trans is very present in candomblé. If you've ever seen a, a, a candomblé, <laughs> a candomblé culture, you, you're going to see people get in trans very easily. And football. <laughs> so there's the trans of football. The idea that you uh, you go to the football every weekend, so you, you you get all your frustrations out, and you don't think about your social condition. That's very present today. We have to go back to the sixty. Today is not is different, but that's the I, that's the the first moment in the the evolution of the popular culture. So the, the great enemy is the irrational trance. That's, that's, that's the idea in the CPCs, in the Carlos Estevan Martins. We can have uh, some nuance. I, I mean, I, I'm just making the, I, I'm making my point. Uh, after we can talk about if you want to. The second moment is what I call a mauvaise conscience. I even may put a, a, a German term there, schlechter Gewissen. I don't know if it's a good translation for Mauvais Conscious. Perfect. <laughs> so that's the second moment. And Terra in Trans is the great film about Mauvais Conscience. Present Paulo Martins is the, the, the character that doesn't know what to do with the, the people. He, he despise the people and he adores the people and he wants to work with it and he's uh, this kind of baroque dilemma what to do so that's the sec this is the, the the second moment and and I say in the, the third point that my point is that tropicalism is a way out of mauvaise conscience how to get out of mauvaise conscience why because you have just had a lot of works, a lot of films, a lot of musics that deny the most authentic popular culture. So how to deal with this? How to deal with this denying? Uh, how to deal with, uh, with this, uh, <clears throat> this idea that you, uh, you may prize, that you, 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 don't, uh, you don't like it, the, the most authentic popular culture? And besides that, you have this knowledge. So in the sixth, this knowledge is, is getting weaker, 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 and weaker. And there is a moment that everything comes inside, all the dilemmas and everything. Uh, uh, and cinema marginal is uh, terra in trans rad radicalized. So that's the third moment. This is the moment of, uh, of uh, tropicalism and more the, uh, in cinema marginal. So the, the free sensations, the abjection, that's a very present fug fug figure. You're going to see Elena Inez vomiting, and it, oh, the film is uh, people screaming all the, tri all the time, it's catology, and uh, so uh, this is uh, abjection, oral versus pleasure and delightment. So on one side you have uh, Torture, uh, you have uh, <clears throat> censure, repression, and in the other ha ha the other side you have uh, counterculture, drugs, sex, rock. This openness to rock it's very difficult in Brazil because you have the the traditional samba, you have even a manifestation of about the guitar electric. Elise Regina was in the, the front of it, and Gilberto Gil. If, it's incredible. He participates after he makes a, a, an auto critic and uh, a parade against guitar electric. <laughs> so you could not use guitar electric. And uh, Cinema Marginal, it's 
Hollywood cinema, uh, avant-garde cinema, and, and also German traditional and industrial culture. So that's the, that's the idea. So uh, th I'm going uh, fast because I want to stay a little more in cinema merge now. Uh, this is the first mo mo moment in cinema. I'm not going to develop this. Uh, this is the, the denial, the big denial, the big criticism of the popular culture in Cinema Nuovo. So it's this, uh, the trans is bad and alienating. So we have to, to fight against trans. So you have the criticism of trans in religion. You find this in Vira Mundo de Geraldo Sauno, in the first film of Glauber Rocha. He already uh, moves a little around, but uh, he has a very critical vision of, of, of Candomblé. Criticism of trans in music. Nossa Escola de Samba is de Manuel Jimenez, Produção Farca. O, os Viramundos também é de Produção Farca, so it's a documentary. It's uh, after they, they had put together in a move that calls Brasil Verdade. It's a, a direct style documentary. Uh, in Nossa Escola de Samba, e in Escola de Samba, Alegria de Viver, que é o primeiro curta do Cacá de X, you have a very critical idea of the, the samba, the Escola de Samba, and that the samba means alienation. And criticism of football trans, trans, Joaquim Pedro de Andrade makes Garrincha Alegria do Povo, is a film about Garrincha, you may know Garrincha, it's Pelé Garrincha, the, the two greater football players in Brazil. In almost half of the film, you have a voiceover uh, uh, <coughs> saying about uh, how the, the, the players are explorer, how what football means. There's, there's even a, 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 a Freudian idea that the football is the, the, the same, I mean, the, the, the milk of the mother, and the people get the... <laughs> <laughs> so a very big uh, theory and uh, Subterrâneos do Futebol, uh, the Maurice Capoville, is, is, is more critical than Garrincha. It shows a lot of Pelé, it shows a lot of Santos, but it finishes with a, 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 a long shot of a, a supporter screaming and screaming, Santos, Santos, saying that. And he says, uh, you go to the football and you forget about your life all, all week. Uh, so this criticism of football trends. So uh, this is the, the second, second moment, the dilemmas of Cinema Novo. This is the tri uh, trilogy. I'm, I'm not going, uh, I don't have time to develop this, but the far away other, so the, the people, the other people is in the Sertão, Deus e o Diabo na Terra do Sol, Vidas Secas e os Fuzis, a trilogia de, the trilogy of 64. Uh, the other is me, so the, the middle class, uh, uh, this is the moment of bad conscience, mauvaise conscience, Terra em Transe, O Desafio e O Bravo Guerreiro, Desafio de Saraceni, e o Bravo Guerreiro de Gustavo Dal. E What Are Me Calling the Lacerate Me? Exasperation. That's the moment of exasperation. Dragada Modal quando sendo guerreiro, Deuses e os Mortos. Uh, Macunaíma. Macunaíma, maybe, is the, the, the film of Cinema Novo that's more closely related to uh, tropicalismo. So uh, it's very. It's, um, it has a, a happiness. It's like the alegria é a prova dos nove. You know? That's the, the point of, uh, of Macunaíma. E Pindorama. Pindorama de Jabor is the, the typical. You, 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 I could put it in the cinema marginal. In the cinema marginal, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's typical of this moment of, uh, of exasperation. So, <coughs> cinema marginal. Uh, this is the question. Would be the third generation of Cinema Novo? I don't think so, but we, we can discuss this. So I, I put the three generations. The second generation, the first, almost the same thing, but uh, if you want to make a division only to situate. So the, 
the central core of Cinema Novo, because people speak a lot of cinema, but you have the, the generation, the, 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 the core of Cinema Novo that starts at the end of the 50s and the first years of the 60s. You have to pay attention because when we talk about the new Latin American cinema, that's a concept I don't like to work with. Because in Argentina, it's, I mean, Latin American is like Europe. I mean, you can say new, new European cinema, what the, the, new, the cinema of, uh, the new cinema of uh, Germany that's produced by television <laughs> has to do with Nouvelle Vague, nothing. <laughs> so, same thing in Brazil. I mean, they're close, but Argentina, Brazil, and Mexico, they're three strong, and Cuba, the Caribe. Uh, three strong points in Latin America, and you have to deal with this, with this reality. There's no organic new Latin American cinema. You can write a manifest, that's okay. I, sh I, I, I support. <laughs> it, it must be, we have to be together and everything. But when you start to make a historic analysis, it's different. So uh, uh, the new cinema in Brazil is very early. It's in 62, 63, and 64, with Deus e o Diabo na Terra do Sol. Deus e o Diabo na Terra do Sol is the end point of neorealismo in South America, and also in the world, if you, in, with, with Nouvelle Vaga. So, uh, Cinema Novo is contemporary to Nouvelle Vaga. Uh, it's a little after, but... Uh, and uh, it's not in 68, it ends in, 60, in 62, six, uh, in 72, 73. But I'm not going to Cinema Novo here. So that's the core generation of Cinema Novo. Glauber, Cacá Diegues, Leon Hirschman, Walter Lima, Sarraceni, Joaquim Pedro, and Gustavo Dal. Gustavo Dal, I put there, but the real core is uh, Joaquim Pedro, Sarraceni, Walter Lima, Leon Hirschman, Cacá and Glauber. Outsiders, Nelson Pereira dos Santos is the big father. He's a lot older. And Rui Guerra, Rui, Rui Guerra is, not, is a stranger. He, he not really got in. Uh, he didn't get along with Glauber, that's one point. <laughs> and he, he did things very similar what, with what Glauber was doing, so they have a kind of a dispute. And he's from Mozambique, from Portugal, but he's, he, he's close, so we can talk. When I I mentioned the films, the trilogies, I put the, 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 the film of, of Glauber Hodge. So it starts in the 50s and ends in the 60s. Uh, the second generation, Jabor, Scorel, and the third generation that would be the, the cinema marginal uh, generation, okay? So you have uh, two main groups of cinema marginal in Sao Paulo, in Rio, and also in Minas, and and Bahia, the smaller groups. In São Paulo, you have Sganzella, Carlos Reikemba, Andrea Tonati, Sganzella, Andrea Tonati, Carlos Reikemba, Jairo Ferreira, <coughs> e João Calegaro. Those are, are uh, uh, those work, all of them work with Boca do Lixo. Boca do Lixo starts in the same time of the Cine Marginal, in the 70s, and they, there's a lot of small producers. They make erotic films, porno chanchadas, comedies. The, the comedy is the great tradition in Brazilian cinema. And they discover this erotic uh, mood that gives money. So they start to make a lot of, 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 of erotic comedies and also some avant-garde films. So they pay for uh, Carlos Aikemba, for uh, Isganzela, for Calegaro, Jairo Ferreira only, only films in the 70s and Super 8. But he's very present. He's the, 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 the great cron. He, he makes the, uh, the, the, he's the chronist of the Cinema Marginal. It is, he's, he's the one who writes about Cinema Marginal and makes this film I like very much, Vampiro, that is, is Super 8, and it's a little uh, later, 77. Now, the other ones, Júlio Cadlaço, Trevistan, José Agrippino de Paulo, Carlos Ebert, João Batista de Andrade is a separate case. But Ebert, José Agrippino, Trevisan, Calasso, uh, Tonati too, Tonati doesn't get very close to the, to the Boca do Lixo. Uh, 
they work with the Oficina, the José Celso Martinez and the uh, literary avant-garde. So there are filmmakers that are close to the Boca do Lixo and they make this kind of radical film and the others that are closer to the, to the uh, tropicalism avant-garde and to the, uh, uh, to, the <clears throat> to the player, to, I mean, to José Celso Martinez, to the group Oficina. And Rogério Isgandel is interested because he's the one who is going to, he's inside the Boca do Lixo, but he's the one who gets out and goes to the Rio and makes Bel Air. But wait a moment, before that, the two big inspirator, inspirators of, of Cinema Marginal, but they are, not, they are not young, they are not from middle class, so it's different. So we have to differentiate things. José Mojica Marins, he, he's, uh, 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 he starts in the 50s. He's very, he's a lot older. And those, uh, uh, this group here, this group, this group, they are all young, they have 20, 25 years, they have all this counterculture ideology of the six in her, their head, but not José Mojica Marins and not Osaldo Candeias. I said Osaldo Candeias is the only popular, he's the, the, he's the son uh, <coughs> of peasants that came to, to Sao Paulo, so it's a different case, but he's, he makes this move a margin that's a kind of... Uh, a big paradigm, a, a big example for cinema marginal. And it's from 67. There, in 67, there are two films in Brazilian cinema, Terra em Trans e A Margem. And A Margem is the first film of Osaldo Candeia, so it's something that comes up like this. And José Marica Marins, Glauber doesn't go well, he, he, he doesn't like very much Candeias, but Mojica, he adores Mojica. So let's go on. That's the, the, the group from Rio de Janeiro, Bressani, Eliseu Visconti, Neville de Almeida, and Luiz Rosenberger. Luiz Rosenberger, a little more independent. Minas Gerais, that comes very, very fast to, to Rio. I mean, Minas always comes to Rio. Uh, they say that they took the capital to, <laughs> from, from Rio and put in Minas Gerais. In Brazil is not Minas, but it's almost, almost Minas. So, uh, uh, but Geraldo Veloso comes to, to Rio in 69 and 70. And Silvio Lana, he made Sagrada Familia with Tonati, with Bang Bang. In, in Bahia, Bahia has a very strong cinema in the, in the beginning of the 60s. And André Luiz Oliveira and Álvaro Marans, they, they, they follow this tradition. So, Bel Air is, is the producer of Sem Essa Aranha. Uh, what's Bel Air? That's the moment they, uh, when Rogério Gonzalo gets together with Júlio Bressan. So, Boca do Lixo comes to Rio de Janeiro. And they got together, they, they met in the Brasilia Film Festival. Uh, apparently, they spend all night, one night together, talking about in Bresson's room and everything, and they, they went out with Bel Air in their, in their head. Bel Air is Rogério, is Gonzalo, is Julio Bressani. There's also Eliseu Visconti, Neville de Almeida, Geraldo Veloso, Ivan Cardoso that circulate around Bel Air, and Helena Inês. Helena Inês is the soul of, the soul and the body. <laughs> mostly the body of Cinema Marginal. She's the, the, the incarnation of Cinema Marginal. So uh, we, we can't think in Cinema Marginal without Helene Inês, because she represents the way she, she, she and it's uh, the, this kind of representation you find in Bandido, but it starts in A Mulher de Todos, the second film of Rogério Inês Gonzalo that he made in, in, uh, in Boca do Lixo. So, Bressani made in, uh, uh, so there's five features between February and May 1970. It's very fast. It ends uh, 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 common life, hip community, they work together, they work together, 
and uh, the, the production family money and some of the money that Rogério made in Boca do Lixo, mostly with Mulher de Todas, that was a huge success. And so he came with this money and Bressani has some family money. They, they didn't need a lot of money. They live together and they work together. So Bressan made a Família do Barulho, Barão Olavo Horrível e uh, Cuidado Madame. Isgranzella made Copacabana Mon Amour. If you can see, it's a very nice film. Cinemascope, like this. <laughs> and after the money went out, Sem a Saranha is, says in millimeters. And Carnaval na Lama, he never finished. You will have brushes. And they say that it's lost, but my point is it's not finished. And they have a Super 8 that Elena, after uh, made a, a short film with, with Elena Inês in, this, in, the, in 2008, 2010, she, she made a, a, a short film with the, the, the footage. So <laughs> it ends in exile. So uh, there is, uh, Brissan is son of a uh, general. So I, I was talking with <laughs> Vicente's problem. They, his father said, uh, uh, call a, a friend and said, go talk with the boys and say if they continue, they're going to be in prison. And be in prison in Brazil at, at, at this time is, was very serious. So they got the fumes under their arms, literally. They put the fumes in a bag and went out from Brazil. So it ends in uh, May, June, and 17th, and then there's the exile period. So uh, in this, the films in the exile, you never know if they were made. It, uh, so what you can find? Amor Loco, uh, the Fada do Oriente, Lágrima da Pantera, it's incomplete. Amor Loco e Memórias de Estrangulador de Louras are finished. Is Granzella try to put together Carnaval na Lama, apparently it didn't work, and Fora do Baralho. That's a film he, he starts, also incomplete. You can see some shots uh, in, the, in, the voyage, in a trip he made to uh, Seara. Uh, both finished the uh, editing of Cuidado Mar uh, Madame e Sem Essa Aranha in London. And Neville makes Night Cats. He says it's lost. I don't know. Uh, I never saw it, <laughs> but he, he, I, I spoke with him two years ago and he said, no, I finished, I made the sound, the film is this, so we have to cry to <laughs> believe it. And uh, also, uh, he, he's close to Wait Seek, uh, uh, the Cosmococca installation in 73. I, I would have some, some stories to tell about Neville Wait Seek, but I don't have. I'm, uh, so I'm almost finishing uh, Cinema Marginal Aesthetics. So uh, that's the point I would like to, to have more time to develop with you. That's a, a question we can talk after the film. It's a group or it's not a group. Uh, when I wrote the book in 86, there was a lot of discussion. The filmmakers don't like to, to, to be called marginal because they say they, they are not marginal, they, ha they have been marginalized. But you have poesia marginal, that's very strong. You have, uh, I, I showed, oitsika, se, seja marginal, be, ma be a hero, be a marginal. So there is this name and they are known by this, but they have this resistance of being uh, a picture as a, a, a group. But it's not an organic group. It's not like Cinema Novo that in the 80s, they still have the, the power in the state uh, founding for cinema. And they, uh, they are always, they work, Cinema Novo works like a group and they protect each other and they know how to get the money and how to, that's nothing about uh, similar to, to Cinema Marginal. But between 68 and 73, that's my point, they exist as a group. They interact between them. There's not a big manifest. And most of all, they have similar uh, uh, Istelist uh, strokes. The, the, the Istelism, the, the, the aesthetics of those films are ve are, is, is very, very, very strong and very related. And uh, uh, that's what I, 
uh, I, I'm, uh, that's the point. Um, I, 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 uh, that's the, the characteristic that I, I point at uh, particular for cinema marginal, the figures of abjection and the figures of delightment. I call curtição, it's the debauchery and the, the abjection. So it's catology, disgust and swollen, vomits, tortured bodies, animalistic bodies, an expression, uh, scream, uh, uh, convulsive gestures, uh, crazy people, meds, and delightment, the stream of delightment, Dionysian anthropophagic, anthropophagic feast, uh, not uh, about itself, but of, of discourse. That's the, the idea of swallowing, the anthropophagic, the, the citation. No? And when you, you, you make this citation, this intertestal pleasure, it goes with kitsch, with comics, with classical Hollywood, churn, uh, and, and chanchada. Chanchada has been very criticized in Brazil until Cinema Marginal. If you, if you read the, the critics from the 50s and 60s, they are very, very uh, hang, angry with chanchada. Oh, this is not good. This is, this is garbage. And, and so Cinema Marginal is the first one who gets the garbage up. So what we would call a Nietzschean, like I'm speaking German, <laughs> Nietzschean mood of the popular gap. Unfortunately, I don't have time to develop this. So I'm going to, to jump. But it's this attraction over excess. So uh, a kind of genealogy of morality. So you don't have anymore the truth, the, the knowledge, but you have the desire, the drive, the sensations, and that's that's the moral. That you you make the the, the truth. That's the uh, uh, delirium. So uh, and the idea. That's why I would like to highlight that the popular turns in. So, I uh, that's the resume. No. Uh, 68, institu Institutional Act Number 5, a hard, hard, hard dictatorship is the worst period. Uh, the Institutional Act is a military coup inside the military coup, so it's terrible. Armed resistance, like in Germany. Censure, torture, a lot of torture. Radical left-wing groups, so clandestinity. You have an option that's not easy. You're going to go to uh, to a, 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 you're going to live in a community life with uh, peace and love, or you, uh, the, the cultural culture is very strong, or you're going to get in armored residence, you're going to get, you, you, you may be killed, you may be tortured. So it's a very big option, and this, those very extreme options, this is the this gives this, these figures of exasperation and delightment that you find in cinema marginal. So counterculture, the, the idea of the trash industrial cultural is good, and uh, the relation with new cinemas, with avant-garde, I put Brecht and Arto. they are not alike, they are maybe even opposite, but <laughs> that's another, <laughs> Another good point to develop, and performance, performance, performance with the body, performance with the, the scream. Uh, so, some some uh, image, uh, swallowing a banana in bang bangi. Uh, animal human, that's very common. It, I, I said, and uh, re reflexivity. I mean, the camera inside the camera, the film that shows itself, that's very present. Swollen ink, that's in Bandido. Ah, and you drink uh, uh, ink, that's Bang Bang, also in, in Bandido. Barão Olavo, that's the film from uh, Bressani in Bel Air. Helene Inez is screaming. Uh, Jô Soares in Hitler's Terceiro Mundo, very grotesque. You got his, his hand here. And his face, uh, and, and this Ilza Carla, it's a very fat actress. She was not, but <laughs> in 68, she, she got fat that she's, she's coming to kill Elena Inez here. 
and uh, oops, this is Mojica, the tarot. You can see here the spire, the sp aranha's spire, no? uh, in the face. Horror, ah, horror, horror, horror. That's Cinema Marginal, and here he's, he's calling. Cuidado, Madame, this is a nice film. She kills all her employees. <laughs> so that's Maria Glads and Eleni Nez. Maria Glads is the killer, and Eleni Nez is the employee. She's the, not the only one. It's a, she's a serial killer of Madame's. And this is a, another point. And uh, this is a draw of blood. It's the same picture that I start the, the presentation. Eleni Nez with this swelling blood or, or this, this, this draw that comes is from the mouth. Screaming in Mangi Bangi. Jardim de Espumas, Jardim, Jardim de Luis Rosenberg. All blood around. Delirium and rage. Gamal is a scream from the beginning from, to the end. And this is a kaleidoscope of representation of Brazil. And my last, uh, my last um, slide, only to finish and to present to you Senha Saranha, just some points, and after we, we can discuss, and we, we can discuss after the film. So Senha Saranha is the second and last complete film of Sganzella in Bel Air. 16 millimeters, direct sound. It has 17 long takes. Uh, he says that uh, they have, uh, uh, Isgazala says it has only 15, but there is a cut in, a, in one of them, and there is another one that he goes to the, like uh, Hitchcock in Hope, he goes to the black and maybe he, he counts one, but we can count two. But 15 or 17, the film is made on or long takes. So this is very good, those of you who like style, who like cinema, <laughs> this is very good. And, Say, and Rogério Granzella is in his most, so he's, uh, he's, he's uh, very inspirated. And so the very beautiful takes. The mise-en-scene is very planned. Elena Inês says, no, this is the most planned film I, I made in all my life, and I believe her. <laughs> because you see the, the, the moving, the, the actors and the camera move, they are very, very planned. It's not something that you pick the camera and you start to film. No, there are all kind of, of... So Aranha is the, the, the character, is the... You don't, you don't have a, a, a history, sure. But Aranha is the Brazilian bourgeoisie. He's, he's the, the rich man. But he also incarnates two different types in a favela and a cabaret, but always is with a Brazilian, this kind of rich man, very arrogant. It's played by the comedian Jorge Loredo, that is a very popular type in television at that time, Zé Bonitinho, a drago, he's saying, woman, I'm here. And that, that is his type in, in television. And uh, Rogério Canzara take this type to the, to, to, to the film. And he has three lovers, Aparecida, that's the black woman, uh, Maria Gladys, and Helene Inês. Uh, uh, Helene Inês is the big star of Cinema Nova. I will speak of her. We, we can uh, come back and speak more. Maria Gladys is the other big star of Cinema Novo. He, she, uh, uh, Cinema Marginal, his other big star of Cinema Marginal. The two make the duo, uh, you saw them in uh, Cuidado Madame, the, the picture I, 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 I showed you. And uh, Maria Glad spent all the films screaming, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Guara, it makes a, a, a small appearance, but he's the other big actor, actor of Cinema Marginal. We can hear his voice over. And the idea that's not an articulate speech, only screams and axioms and popular proverbs, that's what what, they, what uh, Aranha says. And the two popular figures, citation of popular art. So Luis Gonzaga, the king of Bayon, very popular in Northeast and also in, in Rio de Janeiro, in whole Brazil, everybody knows Luis Gonzaga. And Moreira, Moreira da Silva. Moreira da Silva is from the hills of, of uh, is the Malandro. Malandro, 
is uh, the very smart guy that knows everything. So in the film, he's always like this, and, and he, he sings a lot. And he's the king of samba de break, a special kind of samba. So I finish here, and let's go to the film. <laughs> Yes. So, my English. So, it was great. You understand? <laughs> Thank you very much, Fernal. It was a great okay. sum up of the films we, the film we're going to see tonight, but also the films we have seen and we're going to play in this series. So, it was uh, very good to have this uh, overview. We'll make a, a short break, five, ten minutes max, and then we're going to go to the film. I would like to apologize in advance that the quality of the copy we're going to show is not that great. Those of you who have been following the, the, the series know that it's uh, unfortunately often the case. Um, we're showing a, a digital version of the, of the film. It was the best we could get with English subtitles, and I'm sure we're going to be able to see everything that Fernand uh, mentioned about the film, and we can discuss um, afterwards as well. But um, like we've been repeating uh, every time here by Tropical Underground, it's uh, this film's uh, are so difficult to see even in Brazil that uh, we we ourselves consider it a chance uh, to be able to show them at all here and those of you who are used to the quality of screenings in the film museum here in general uh, can have your uh, you, um, comments about that, but uh, like I like to to express that it's the best we can do, and we're very happy to be able to show the films. So let's make that short break, and we'll be back with the film. Thank you. Very short break. So please welcome again Fernando Ramos and Vincent Rediga. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> um, let me start off with um, an observation that picks up something that you said at the very beginning of your talk. Um, the film reminded me of two other films uh, as I was watching it. One that was made almost in the same year, um, 1971, if I'm not mistaken, Warnung vor einer heiligen Nutte by Fassbinder, um, warning against a holy prostitute. Um, <clears throat> which is a film that was also shot in in a limited set of locations by Fossbinder and his gang of friends. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first film that Michael Ballhaus shot with Fossbinder, and it consists entirely of long takes, just like this film, and they're all beautifully choreographed. So at the same time, <coughs> <laughs> the other end of the world, Fossbinder makes the same film. Um, the other film it reminded me of is Jean Rouche's um, uh, Les Maîtres Fous, um, which is a, an ethnographic documentary of a somewhat dubious status as a documentary. Um, supposedly, it's a film where Jean Rouge, the ethnographer, becomes part of the ritual and enters in trance himself. Uh, and there's this one incredible scene in this film where they walk down the hill from the favelas down towards the beach. Um, uh, and where this, this, there's this choreography of dancing and Elena Inez is wearing the white dress. Uh, and the camera is sort of part of, of the ritual and part of, part of the choreography. Similarly, um, the one scene shot inside um, uh, where Elena Inez is wearing the, you know, the pearl uh, dress and the camera sort of becomes one of the mingling bodies uh, in, in, the, in, in the whole scene. Uh, so those are just two loose associations. One, a French ethnographic filmmaker who is very emphatically a filmmaker and who makes an, an anthropological documentary that is sort of a performative send-up of 
ethnographic documentaries that will be Limitre Fou, the other one Fassbinder. But then you started off by saying something, you know, very categorically that I think is very important here. You said cinema is, regardless of the circumstances, always national cinema. And Brazilian cinema is national cinema in the sense that it has to deal with precisely the problem that you were describing. I mean, you offered this beautiful Hegelian <laughs> dialectic <Hegelian>. where <laughs> in, <Yeah. laughs> in three steps, you know, the discovery of the people, the yeah. back consciousness phase, and then the internalization of the trance. And, yeah. and um, uh, quite frankly, I think the idea of, of the internalized trance is a wonderful heuristic for Cinema Marginal. And the film that we've just seen exemplifies that very well. But we need to remain aware of the fact this is what you stressed in your talk, that this is a specifically Brazilian configuration. So if we, I think if we went back and looked at Le Maître Fou and, and the Fassbender film, we would find that something very different plays out in both those films. And I think one of your claims would be that what we're seeing here, the internalization of the trans as a way of dealing with, with the fact of the other uh, is a very specifically Brazilian experience. Would you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> no, totally. Uh, well, I, I, unfortunately, I, I didn't see the first Binder film, mm. but uh, Le Met Fou, it's, uh, well, it's a uh, move about trans. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. and uh, I think you it, make a, a very good point there. I mean, that's, uh, well, um, Cinemas is a. It's not uh, as as we can see in your example. There is parallel. Uh, there's parallel between things that are happening in the same time. Mm. I mean, in, in Germany, in Brazil, in in France, Africa. Yeah. And yeah, Mali in that particular. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I think that's uh, that's a good example. Mm. Yeah, sure. Um. One of the things that became very clear, I mean, uh, Laura profusely apologized for the bad quality of the print, but um, uh, I think we have to consider the fact that, first of all, this was shot in 60 millimeter, and it was very likely a reverse print. Um, so the image quality to begin with wasn't terribly good in terms of the resolution and in terms of the sharpness of the image. But then this is a restore print. Uh, you know, we didn't get the actual print, but we have a digitized version of the restore print. And I think uh, where you can tell it is that the color scheme is pretty reliable. And what you can also see is that a lot of thinking went into uh, in, into planning the color scheme. I mean, the the, the dresses are carefully chosen. Even yeah. In the opening in the opening scene, you know, the green backgrounds, the dress of the the woman who sits at the desk yeah. as they leave the building. Yeah. Um, it, it's part of the rhythm. It's part of the texture of the film. So yeah. it's very beautifully crafted and very yeah. well choreographed and, and planned Joseph out. Joseph Ventura, it's an Edson, it's the, the camera one. Mm -hmm. So the. I didn't give the, the credit, <laughs> so it's very well photographed. I mean, it's, it's not easy to make those long shots. <laughs> and you see, for instance, in the last shot and the first shot, well, they, they talk a lot and everything happens. And when you look, they are back again and the camera, you know, mm. starts to, it's in the right spot and the right... And uh, that's very well noted. The colors, mm -hmm. they are very well. It's a 16 millimeter film, but if you see Copacabana Mon Amour, mm -hmm. oh, the colors are there. Yeah. And uh, cinemascope, right? <laughs> and uh, big screen. Yeah. If you if you can project, I, I don't know. It's it's very it's, it will. And, and the 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 screen the the colors there are the most beautiful colors yeah. <laughs> that you can think and uh, well here you have a 16 millimeters and uh, but the, it is very 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 planet yes and he is gonzalo he comes from a, 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 a two uh, uh, features film the bandido and uh, mulher de todas 
there are big productions mm. in Brazilian terms. So uh, and certainly uh, compared to this one, yes. Yeah. And yeah. so he, he uh, uh, um, it's not the case of Bressane. Mm. And uh, o anjo nasceu e matou a família e foi ao cinema. Is uh, there are small, small, mm. f- small productions. Yeah. And uh, so we, you can see uh, some his experience in movie, in big movie, mm. in the yeah. in yeah. those, those no, no, films. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. this is an experienced filmmaker. Yeah. Just by the way, as a public service announcement, we will be screening Copacabana, Copacabana Mon Amour on May twenty third, and Elena Ineos will present it. It's yes. also. It's also Elena Ines' birthday. Oh, you you so. bring in, I saw it. You bring in <laughs> Elena Ines. So, yeah. so don't miss her. Don't miss it. Don't miss don't it. Don't miss it. Uh, and it's a really, really. Well, it's like uh, it's like uh, uh, Senha Serrani, but uh, it's a big screen and mm. a big production. Mm. Yeah, and Elena here, uh, Maria Gladys is more incarnating the. Elena too, but they make a duo. Uh-huh. And in Copacabana Mon Amour, Elena is it's great. The, it's yeah. The story of the show. Uh, yeah. So. I have two more small questions and technical questions before we go to the audience. Um, uh, do you know how many takes did it take for the shots to be completed? Was it, was it usually the first take or did they do several takes? Yeah, not many takes. Not yeah. the first one, I think, but mm. uh, b- not many takes. They mm. didn't have um, a lot of negative. Right, right. So uh, it's very planned and uh, choreographed and uh, let's shoot and that's, mm. the, that's how it goes. And in terms of the sound, most of the sound is direct sound. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's this wonderful shot where the whole gang is seen in the mirror and you can see yeah. the sound operator moving, yeah. up, moving around yeah. the microphone. And so clearly most of the sound is direct sound, dialogue, um, you know, noise, uh, all of that. Even the music, most of the music yeah. seems to be directly recorded as yeah. it was filmed. Yeah. But then in some places there is sound montage. So is that yes. is that a correct observation? Yes, that's it. Mm. I mean, there's a lot. Mang Bang is the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can project Mang Bang too. Yes. Yeah. Project already? No. No. Oh, you okay. must. That's the the essence of cinema marginal. You you see everything, yeah. scatology and screaming, and uh, swallowing, and mm. uh, that's monkey bang. It's very strong as as image. And a- April twelfth, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, will dis- it present it. Sorry, has almost no sound. It's on music. Right. <laughs> Not they, no they, they don't have direct sound there, but uh, you have direct sound in in uh, Saint Sorania, and some studio sound too. Uh, I don't know exactly, but I think they finished the sound. Certainly, they finished the sound in London. They did. After yes, leaving I think. Brazil. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yes. After leaving, okay. leaving. you can ask Elena right. <laughs> for the details, but yeah. uh, 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 I think the, the the film was finished in London, and uh, the sound problem was finished there too. Okay. Yes, but it, it has a lot of direct sound. You can yeah. you can see it. Yeah. So. I mean, the music, dance, the yes. scenes, just also yes. technically, uh, they're they're amazing. Uh, Moreira da Silva is the the guy in the the big house. Mm. That's he he sh- he sings the samba samba de break, and Luis Gonzaga is uh, the one with the accordion. Yeah. So, do we have questions from the audience? Yes, please. Um, thank you a lot for your talk. Um, I was wondering if you could comment some more on the gender roles in the movie because I found them quite remarkable. Um, as I noticed, or what I found interesting, um, is that it was mostly the female body that performed access um, in one way or the other, whether objection or pleasure. Um, and that the male protagonist, for example, um, gave a lot of political speeches which a female protagonist as well um, did, but this special form of body performance um, seemed to me more more remarkable with the female bodies. Um, and I was wondering if 
that could be linked to a, to a certain form of social criticism that is also linked to a certain form of um, gender criticism of gender roles um, or um, if it might be a reproduction of those roles or if you had an opinion on that. Okay, well, um, you, you're right and uh, the, the female body is, is explored in the uh, you have the the male body body of the the, the black guy that uh, takes his clothes off. Who is dressed as a woman after that? Y yes. Well, he puts a, a kind of uh, coverture red inside. But uh, you you have a good point there. I mean, <laughs> there is a lot of difference between Eleni Nays and Maria Gla Gladys and the way they express themselves freely, and George Loredo. George Loredo, uh, the, the right word in English, it's what we call trejeito. It's a kind of gesture that is stereotyped. So it's like, you know, always like this. And so it's very contained. And and his speak is this, uh, the the way he speaks is this, is the same. It's like his body. I mean, there's no uh, flow of words like I'm speaking now. He only says proverbs. You know, he only say uh, 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 fixed words. I mean, syntagmas, close syntagmas. You know, uh, three or four words that go together, and you can take it in many phrases. That's what. That's the way he speaks. So he he speaks very loud and and very contained. And his body too, he's, uh, uh, is, uh, he comes from a, a character, he, he reproduces, not all the time, but uh, uh, most uh, of the time, he reproduces a, a television character. That's uh, the, 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 the one that uh, like the woman and he is irresistible for woman. So he, oh, woman, I'm here. You know? but. So uh, that's a that's a good point you, you got there, and that's a, uh, a good point I could develop uh, more if I had time. But the uh, 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 the, the principal character Aranha, he's very containing in the gestures, mm -hmm. and the women are more uh, are more uh, liberated, and he's very aggressive with women too. So you have to, to think that the film was made in the in the six in the seventies, and uh, they they have all this liberation, in the this liberation front, the the woman liberation and uh, uh, sex uh, free sex. Uh, that there was all, all this was in the horizon, but it's this is not the, the same kind of gender problem or this gender questions that uh, we have today. I mean. Uh, there's not a, a, a conscience like, uh, I don't know, those uh, Me Too or something like this. You know, that's that's, that's uh, uh, a different point. Obrigada. Mm, in Arab they say, shukran, I come from Egypt. can only recommend it. I would like to know uh, where uh, were these films shown? Maybe in the open air? Who were the, uh, yeah, the uh, viewers of these films? I would like to know. And I didn't understand the point regarding bad conscience. Maybe you could just okay. give a few details on this. Well, uh, the film were not shown, at least not this one. I mean, they, he, he was shown 10 years after. Uh, I mean, uh, it was censored, not even censored, it doesn't... Uh, uh, if, if they went, if they sent it to the censure, sorry, it would be uh, forbidden. So, uh, and, and after he, he, they went to exile, before the, the, the film was completed, and when they come back, uh, things were different. It's not a... Uh, 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 um, a film to, to, to pass in cinema. It's not some uh, a mass uh, product. I mean, it's not. Uh, <coughs> uh, so the film was never shown. I mean, it was shown mostly in the, in the expositions and uh, so. 
So the, the cinema marginal that was close to Boca do Lixo, like uh, Mulher de Todos e O Bandido, they circulated more. But uh, the avant-garde ones, the, the more avant-garde films, they, they don't. So it's for a restrict, restricted public. About the, the mauvaise conscience, I mean, uh, so um, bad conscience is when you have a remorse, when you have something that you don't know how to deal with. And that's why, why I said that you have this, this gap in, in Brazilian society and you have a, a, a critical moment, a, a denial of the, 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 the gap by uh, uh, the assumption of uh, knowledge. And then you have this moment of uh, mauvaise conscience, bad conscience. You, you can understand bad conscience when, when you, you have a remorse of something and you did, uh, uh, I mean, the whole uh, Catholic culture, for instance, <laughs> is constructed around bad conscience. Jesus uh, make a scene, we have some kind of uh, guilty, so this is bad conscience. And in this case is the moment, and I said tropicalism and cinema marginal, is the moment where the bad conscience explodes. And it explodes for abjection, terror, screaming, and delightful, you know, the, the big pleasure, the, the big laugh, the debauchery. So there are those moments that come together in a way to get get behind the bad conscience. Mm. That's a kind of a historic, he said he Hegelian, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> a kind of a historic movement, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, it just to underscore that point, uh, something that, that you were saying, Fano, uh, was that the film that best embodies the moment of bad conscience is Terem Trance. Yes, uh, which we screened uh, two weeks ago, and Ismael Javier uh, talked about it, and uh, it's a film about uh, you know a failed political campaign, and the key character is a journalist, poet, political strategist, who wants to liberate the people, but in a way despises the people, and and his ambiguity is is sort of the the crystallization point of the back consciousness in the development that you yeah. were describing and Terem Tranze is really a crucial film in in 68 and it really triggered uh, the Tropicalia moment yeah I mean, Gaetano sure. Veloso explicitly says that the final uh, long final scene yeah uh, in Terem Tranze was sort of the the, the trigger for Tropicalia yeah. uh, and and so it makes a lot of sense I think yeah. to and is Granzella, he was close of Cinema Novo, is Granzella yes. Ibrisana, and th there's a description when Bandido da Luz Vermelha was shown to the Cinema Novo generation, mm -hmm. and the room was plain, yes. and the film finished, and there is a big silence. Yes. Why there is a big silence? Because it's not Cinema Novo, there's yes. nothing to do with, with Cinema Novo, and it's a great, great film. Yeah. And this is the moment that he got away from Cinema Novo, yeah. because the reaction was, wow, <laughs> what are we going to do with this? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, uh, bad conscience, it's my analysis. <laughs> so, uh, it's not something that uh, is, a, is a definition, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a good way to explain if you want to, to have an overview of the 60s, I think it's a good concept to work with, but I mean, there, there are people that work dif in different manners, even mm. like you. Yeah. And, uh, it's a, an analysis that I'm uh, uh, offering for, yeah. <laughs> for you, yeah. And, and maybe an, another little tidbit of information that you, uh, uh, you know, you talked about it in, in the talk, but it may have gotten lost. Uh, the production situation of, of Bel Air is very particular. You know, they get together, um, uh, uh, Scanzerla and Elena Inez, they move from Sao Paulo to Rio de Janeiro and they team up with Giulio Bressani and they make these six or seven films in no, five, five, five films five in, two, in two and a half months, something yeah. like that. So it's, it's a febrile explosion of creativity. Yeah. Um, but then what happens? Uh, I'm just recapitulating what you, what you already told us, but just for the sake of clarity. Bressan is the son of a general 
uh, and uh, Bresana's father learns about an imminent crackdown and uh, the imminent arrest of the whole whole gang and sort of discreetly signals them that it is time to leave the country. So they pack up and go to London. And it was not so discreetly. Uh, I mean, okay. they, they went to the, to the army yeah. and they have an interview with a military, mm -hmm. a very hard interview. Yeah. Got out and uh, said no. We they realized it was time to leave. Yeah. And and, and they, so they were pressed. Yes. To go out. They were strictly pressed. Yeah. And so that go film out. that film was in in the in the luggage and they finished it yeah. in London. Yes. Yes, Sonia, please. Uh, thank, first of all, thank you very much for your very nice and clear presentation of this film, which I found very interesting on different levels. And uh, of course, the Slisk one is the one that maybe we as non-Brazilian can get at first mm, yeah, um, more. And uh, to uh, regarding this, I would like to stress also what Vincent sa said uh, regarding the sound. I found the construction of the sound in this film um, um, really very interesting and complex, uh, considering also that uh, it was uh, direct sound, but also like uh, there are uh, there is really uh, it's constructed like a sort of cacophony uh, in a way, and um, I was struck very much by the presence of all these uh, disturbing sounds we we um, that we don't find usually in film at all. Um, and uh, so I found mm, a very interesting uh, yeah, soundscape construction in this film. Um, and also, I, I, I mean, the, the kind of um, constru construction of these sequences, long shot, which alternates uh, the very heavily staged ones with the performers and the ones um, in the um, f yeah in the uh, villages uh, showing like uh, people like the more anthropological or ethnographic ones so i really found mm, the film very very interesting and that's why uh, i was also asking myself regarding um the uh, first of all the reception history which you um, um already said was kind of n not existing uh, almost and um, and n now the um, I would like to ask you which is uh, the um, politic of access and preservation of these materials because yeah I mean um, the film in this form is uh, probably not very much uh, um, yeah, in, in a good form to be presented, uh, or the restoration at least in this digitization is kind of um, and yeah not uh, very uh, uh, good for <laughs> an audience. So I was wondering uh, for the archives, uh, national archives, or wi which kind of archives are uh, in Brazil um, taking care at all of cinema uh, marginal materials and. Uh, what is the like mm, politic of access for these materials? I, is yeah. Well, uh, for the for the archives first, I have a PhD students that start to work <laughs> with uh, uh, with the state of the copies of the cinema marginal. What happens to the the copies? So, uh, Anjo Nasceu, we have many copies. We have a, a good film museum in Brazil. It's a it's a big one, and uh, so the film is uh, preserved. I don't know if, if we don't have many copies of Saint Asaranha. I don't know if this one is the best one. We we're talking before the the session. We have uh, we ha read we had a recent a recent problem with the Cinemateca Brasileira, the film center in Brazil, the Cinemateca of Brazil, and uh, a for about two years, they they have um, a cut of of uh, personal and, um, but now they are they are back to work apparently. 
So, uh, but the film is, is, is a 16 millimeters film, it's, it's, it's preserved. I mean, uh, I think it, it deserves a, a better work. The, we had a, 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 a cycle of Cinema Marginal recently in Brazil, last, last year, in 2016, the year before last year. And Paulo Sacramento, I don't know if you, you talk with him, and he's a filmmaker, and he made a, he made at least a, a, about ten copies, new copies, and I I think that Senha uh, uh, Serena was not between them, but they they have new copies, really new copies of some cinema marginal films, and it's somebody that's good to look for, he, he, he lives in Sao Paulo, and I saw some of those cops, and they are very, very good, so I said, no, I can't believe this is the film. <laughs> so it's, it's completely different. So uh, it's not preserved, but it's not specially a disaster. <laughs> I mean, it's like anywhere else in the world. I mean, the, if you're not in Europe or in the United States, I think we have a, a, some kind of good uh, preservation conditions in Brazil with all problems that you have in, in third world. Well, so that's for the archive. For the sound, you've noticed very well this kind of annoying sound. It's, it reminds me Godard. Also, he has uh, people talking. There's uh, an airplane. Brah! You don't yeah. understand anybody. And there's one point. I, I said the, few, the, the, the plans were very choreographic, but always as, as uh, uh, long takes in, in this moment with cinema verite and direct, there's a lot of, of improvisation too. Uh, I, I, I wanted to highlight this because people think, oh, he got a camera in the hand and he starts to film it. No, sure, it's not that. But it's open to improvisation. And, and this is uh, underground, and, and especially in Brazil. Things happen and you don't know where going to happen. I mean, there's some programmation, but in a lot of the sound is casual. I mean, sound that happens when they descend the street in the, the favela, they didn't talk before with the public <laughs> to, to how to react. I mean, this is not, there's a lot of, of documentary mood in that. I mean, people think this is happening in your filming, in uh, 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 you have a plan. You have a plan. And for the sound, uh, it's uh, more improvisation because sound happens. So you have to deal with. And uh, sh sure, your cinema. Cinema is, is made in an edition, uma mesa de montagem. You have to edit. <laughs> and in, in the process of editing, a lot of things happen. So you, never f you can never forget this. But uh, it's improvisation, yeah. Yeah, on, on the other hand, I mean, uh, I think that the dialogues uh, are so very much uh, like um, fitting and also complex in a way. Uh, in, I mean, they remind to um, different meanings. I mean, uh, we have on one hand this kind of noises and improvised sound, but on the other hand, the, the dialogue or some dialogue, some uh, like comments, these uh, voices commenting uh, on the films, which is mm, like very much uh, yeah, meaningful and uh, like rem mm, yeah, in a way uh, mm, tell us mm, like mm, more about uh, or in a maybe um, yeah, metaphorical way what is happening also the, the uh, coming back of some uh, kind of uh, phrases or, uh, and um, albums like lyrics um, yeah no, you said well lyrics that there's very few dialogues there are frozen syntagmas frozen phrases and some of them repeating the planet, uh, Earth, uh, is the same phrase. She, she, she says that, ten, uh, Lenny and they say, ten, uh, and uh, Maria Glatz, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, my, my stomach hurts. And so what I call frozen syntagmas, that's, uh, that's the correspondence in the, the, in the speaking lingua language of the, 
of the of the body, the, the free body. You have the free body, uh, as I was talking, in the body that's very very dear of Aranya, but the 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 there is no flow of language. They don't speak between them. They scream and they say frozen syntagmas. You know things. Hey, what's over? I'm the best one in the world. It goes like this. There's no normal normal phrase. That's a very. It's a very interesting point. Uh, interesting point. I mean, uh, they don't talk about nothing. <laughs> they say phrase frozen syntagmas. Sometimes has a meaning, and sometimes they don't have meaning. Well, it's certainly not the dialogue that moves the action forward, and there's yeah. no character development either. So. Yeah, that's another you point. Know. Aranha is many, there are many Aranhas. <laughs> yeah. Well, this film wouldn't get made in Hollywood. Uh, do we have other questions and comments? Oh, perhaps I have one. Yes, please. A question. Um, I am. I mean, we've mentioned in the beginning that Fernand was one of the first to write a, a book or text about Cinema Marginal, and I was kind of wondering if you could sum it kind of quickly how and if your your view has changed from from you mean you mentioned you're working on a new book that you want to write about Cinema Marginal and. Um, like with the view from nowadays and from 30 years ago, in your view on these films, um, when you see this film now, like it probably has changed a lot. So from these 30 years, since the first book you wrote about it. So perhaps you can say a little bit about that. Yes, I, I want to get uh, more deep in my analysis in the theory, not only the historic, not, uh, yes, I want to get my more deep in my analysis, not only the the historical analysis, but the theoretical analysis. I think there's points that I want to develop that I didn't have this vision before. But the point uh, when I uh, when I first wrote the book is the same. I mean, maybe maybe if you talk with Eleni Nes, she'll probably say there's no cinema marginal, there's no we're just filming in. And uh, that's, I don't know, I, that's the point, uh, for, it's clear for me, it was clear in the 80s and it's clear now. I mean, there is a generation, there is a, a, a whole bunch of films, and they're not few, there are about 20 films like this, exactly like this, <laughs> so 20 feature films and underground, so there, there, there has been a movement cinema marginal. If they are a very current group, uh, if they are not, if they are different, and uh, if they are, if there are films in the 80s that are like those, you don't find films in the 50s like this, <laughs> but <laughs> I mean after, uh, afterwards that there are films, and some of those filmmakers, they, after they, they, they made things completely different, for instance Nevili, he made the mass move. I mean, films from a huge public, and uh, and uh, well, some some of them continue the the same kind of film, and some not. But that's my point. Uh, I, I thought when I, I start to think about it, I thought that I found something, and I still I still I still believe in that in, in that is something organic. As I said, it's not like Cinema Novo, that's not the same generation, but uh, I think there is a, a something that we can call uh, Cinema Marginal. I, I'm not trying to cut and make uh, structures and classify, I'm not interested in, uh, in archives, and <laughs> but uh, it's only a way of talking about uh, films that were made uh, in this speci special moment uh, of uh, Brazilian history and world history. And I mean, where would we end up if we let the artist tell the critic how to do his work? <laughs> That's a point. <laughs> that will be a paraphrase of Benjamin. Um, all right. If there are no more questions, thank you very much for now. Thank for, you, Vicente. For bringing this film to thank our you. attention and for beautifully framing and introducing it. Thank you so much and for the discussion as well. Okay, thank you.
Okay, great. Thanks, everybody that stayed until the end. And we'll see you again in two weeks uh, with um, How Tasty Was My Little Frenchman, Como Era Gostoso Meu Francês, and Professor Lucien Ajib, who's coming uh, from uh, England to talk to us. So I'll see you all there. <laughs>